Hey guys, this webio is the first of a series I'm going to call Webuation. Now what's a Webuation? I'll tell you that. A Webuation is a combination of a webio with an innovation, therefore an innovation in transportation. It's basically an innovation in transportation that I feel should at least be considered whether it has positives or negatives because it'll replace an antiquated way of handling traffic in certain situations. What I mean by that is this is a diagram showing Interstate 76 in Philadelphia. Now I know I'm using this as an example. Interstate 76, also known as the Schuylkill Expressway, is extremely crowded in the morning and evening in the rush hour directions. This also applies to any other crowded four-lane highway. So I'm just using Interstate 76 as an example. Now the current setup is the existing eastbound shoulder, the existing eastbound lane, and another existing eastbound lane. And there's a physical barrier here. On the other side would be existing westbound lane, an existing westbound lane, and the shoulder. I know this is not really accurate, but the road actually does go north to south in some areas with eastbound going down and westbound going up. Now, this takes around 30 feet of horizontal right of way per side or around 60 feet total, 60, 62 feet, assuming the lanes are like 10 to 12 feet, including the shoulders. So I was thinking, why not use all the lanes to the advantage? And what I mean by that is, my first thought was to make the shoulders new lanes. Okay, good. But what happens to the shoulder? There would be no shoulder. If you break down, the entire road will come to a halt. So what I did here is the existing shoulder and the existing outer lane of both directions will become the new lanes, new regular travel lanes. The shoulders will be moved to the inside and I'll tell I'll say the negatives and positives about moving that it's just something to consider moving the shoulders to the inside of the road not on the outside but the inside there'll be an eastbound shoulder on the inside and the westbound shoulder on the west side okay you got that so two lanes and then two inner shoulders so that is essentially the same thing and you'd be like, okay, what's the deal with this? I'll tell you now. Let's say now there is traffic, excessive eastbound traffic in the morning going towards center city. They need a third traffic lane, right? So what they could do is make this an eastbound lane three in, in the rush hour. As you can see here, this yellow arrow indicates active during rush hour in the peak direction. So this would be the eastbound lane 3. And this here would become a two-way shoulder. Now it's not the safest option, but it'll definitely be much safer than no shoulder at all. So three eastbound lanes, two westbound lanes, and one two-way shoulder in this area here in the morning and it's all reversed in the afternoon so all these three would be westbound lanes this would be the two-way shoulder and these two would be the eastbound lanes so in effect you get five travel lanes including three in the rush hour direction plus you get a shoulder so emergency vehicles for example can pass the traffic not to mention if a car breaks down or runs out of fuel or has a flat tire they won't hold up hundreds of thousands of people, literally, because the road handles 205,000 people a day in its most crowded locations. Now that's regular rush hour. Now in the case that there is extreme rush hour, for example, filling up after an accident or rubbernecking, what could be done is actually opening this as eastbound. So all four of these could be eastbound, remaining two westbound, there would be no shoulder, but still four eastbound lanes and two westbound lanes in extreme situations. I don't think that should happen in many chances, but that's the best solution I could find. So, you may be wondering, inner shoulders, right? Well, the only way to really make this work 
is the road will need to be widened a little. So the lanes, the existing lanes are 10 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet, 10 feet. What the new configuration would be is 12 feet, 12 feet, 14 feet for added safety in this. 14 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet. I don't want people to risk their lives when their car has a flat tire in this situation. So the right of way will need to be widened by four feet in total. However, that is nothing compared to how much is required for an additional lane. In fact, many of the bridges can handle this without any upgrade. Importantly, there's no physical barrier in between the lanes of traffic. So the shoulders can be used as two-way shoulders in rush hour, or you could have four travel lanes. Instead, it could just be a marked yellow line. This may not be very safe, but especially in non-peak times, there's still enough room between the two ways of direction that it will be reasonably safe. So as I said, the green arrow is active at all times. The yellow arrow is active during rush hour only in the peak direction. And the orange arrow is active only during extreme rush hour, for example, filling up after a crash. For the middle two lanes, they can be used as a shoulder. In most rush hours, the middle lane opposite the normal peak direction will act as a two-way shoulder. Only in extreme rush hour cases would there be no shoulder available. Gantries will control what weather lanes are available. So for example, in the rush hour, gantries for eastbound will say these three available. This would have like a yellow marking indicating shoulder, these two westbound. Now this may be good, but there is a lot of controversy. First, safety. Regardless if these lanes are slightly widened, there is going to be a safety issue with placing shoulder lanes in the middle. That's not to say that middle shoulders have not been done. In many places where there are dual, dual configurations, for example, my the best example I can think of that is Interstate 78 between exit 48 which is route 24 and exit 59 which is route 95 there they have four carriageways and if you're on the inner carriageway and brake yeah that's essentially an inner shoulder i know it's separated by a concrete barrier up there but it's an inner shoulder nonetheless so i think this could go past that so that's one of the main criticisms i could see about this the other one is educating the public about how this works. It may not seem that bad, but trust me, when you're trying to teach people what an inner shoulder is, that could be pretty tricky. And I'm going to use another analogy here. In many states, they have been installing pedestrian hybrid beacons. So they're not regular traffic lights, but they're lights that are off when no one wants to cross. It's basically a pedestrian crossing signal. They will flash yellow, indicating someone wants to cross and then it'll turn yellow or solid yellow and then solid red, which is the same as regular light. And after that, turn flashing red for the cars to go after they come to a complete stop after their solid red light has been active for a while. And then after that, it goes off and people can go. That's very confusing for many people. If you would think that a blank light would indicate you have to stop, in that case, no. So I think both safety and education are the main flaws to this design, but I do think this has a lot going for it. Now let's go to the actual road. This is the road right here. I'm going to go to the infamous Conshohocken curve. So this is a four lane highway, as you can see here. It has two decently sized shoulders. So I'm going to actually use, this is the first time in Webio, by the way, that I'm using the street view so what what i was saying is this and this would become the existing travel lanes this would become a travel lane only in rush hour peak direction other times it would become a shoulder and the same thing on the other side now you may be wondering i already made a web view about a high speed railway line express city urban line connecting concha hawken to philadelphia well, that's going to require a lot more work than this solution. That could be more of a long-term solution, while this here could be more of a short-term solution. Another thing is, if my Interstate 876 proposal comes out to be true, 
that's only going to add more traffic in this area here not so much here but east of that that's when the real bottlenecks will start and it's still four lanes here so that's where i think such a proposal like this will help a lot thank you for watching that was my first web ovation if you liked it comment see what you like and dislike about it i want to hear comments on how this can be improved i know this is not perfect but everything has its plus and minuses and you have to choose between what is the best for the citizens of the local area thank you and goodbye